Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us on our two o'clock press briefing. Uh, I am not Nick Pascooley, but I work for him. So hopefully I can fill in and do a good job while he is away uh, from the office this afternoon. We have a lot of information to share with you today. I thought we might start with our friends from uh, Caltrans. Um, I see Kevin Trubinsky. Are, 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 Trubinsky, are you you able to tell us a little bit more about some of the road situations this afternoon on Highway 1? Kevin? Yes, I am. Just give me one. Just give me one quick second. I see your name, but I don't hear you. Hi, Kevin, would you like me to take that? There you are. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, we Kevin. We have a, a hard closure that will go into effect today at 4 p.m. at our slide uh, just north of the town of Gorda. And we're uh, asking in support of the Monterey uh, evacuation uh, notice um, that any residents north of that slide uh, have this one opportunity to travel south uh, uh, before four o'clock today. Uh, there's this, uh, this slide continues to uh, grow uh, even from uh, in, over the last couple of days. And uh, uh, we fear that it may not be passable uh, after today. So we're urging any residents north of Post Mile 10.6, that's uh, uh, right around uh, the Willow Springs yard, north of there to Paul's slide to use this opportunity to come uh, if they if they desire so to travel south across the uh, what will be a full closure of the highway later this afternoon. Thanks very much, Kevin. And I understand that report. folks at Big Sur have gotten that notification that uh, warning has gone out this afternoon. Could you repeat the window of time that they yeah, have? I, I apologize. Uh, we're we're uh, we're trying to get everybody out uh, before four p.m. today. Thank um, you. It may it may be open until four thirty today, but we're certainly urging people to uh, take advantage of this one opportunity. Anybody south of Paul's slide, uh, if they would like to take this up this one opportunity to travel uh, south and. Um, and get through that closure because once it closes, there's every chance that there will not be enough road to, to allow anybody through. Thank you so much. And can you stay with us for questions? Yes, I could, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm hoping that we could talk a little bit about shelter operations. I see Krista Hani, uh, who is also our equity officer here at the EOC and has, has been up at our shelter operations and Krista, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening up there today and what services and assistance is being provided? Hi, good, good afternoon, everybody. Yes, uh, well, it's shelter operations as it was yesterday where uh, there are the residents in the shelter that are there uh, receiving services. Um, I think the, the school-aged children are off in school. Uh, and then there is also, of course, all the food distribution that occurs at least three times a day and also the snacks. We do have other services that have come in. There's a service table with several very important community partners that many of the residents are already familiar with um, to connect with and talk to about other services. We're getting out the new flyers that thank you, uh, the public information office has produced to talk about the re-entry process um, and also a services flyer that the community partners have produced. Um, then there's also medical services for them and partners from Salud para la Gente and Clinica de Salud del Valle de Salinas are both there uh, offering a variety of medical services to, to those individuals. Um, and then we're also, uh, for people who are interested in, they, there is items there as part of uh, the donations that have come in for the people in the shelter and then we're directing other donations out for the community, out into the community, uh, to the community partner out there. Sorry, did I see Roxanne Wilson? 
uh, here with us can and she, she would be able to give one? an even better update she's been more working on shelter operations as well no i think you actually did a great job um krista we are actively working with community-based organizations to um build up a network for the people who are not staying at the shelters and getting those resources out um we are incredibly grateful again I, I can't stop saying it for all of the help that is poured in from the community but the shelter operations are uh, are running smoothly um needs are being met it's a it's been six days and we're we're getting better every single day so um we thank the community also for for being so great great graceful for um having us in their town thank you Thank you both. And if you could stay with us for some questions uh, later. I also see we have Carrie Deaton from the American Red Cross. Carrie, I'm wondering if you could uh, share some information with us today, especially about services uh, that you might be assisting shelter residents with. Sure, thanks for the opportunity and, and good afternoon, everybody. So Red Cross has been on the ground across California supporting um, shelters all over various counties, including um, shelters in Monterey County and, and Santa Cruz County. So we've got about 500 volunteers and they are sort of uh, trained in various different roles. So we've got our shelter workers that are partnering with a lot of different um, county, county and community partners um, to make sure the shelters are supported, folks have what they need. Um, we've got um, feeding services, relief supplies, but we also have disaster health and mental health volunteers that are supporting residents with replacing prescription medications, you know, wheelchairs, walkers, um, eyeglasses, things of that nature. Um, and we've got some shelter resident transition teams that are preparing as well to just work with residents to kind of um, figure out what their next steps might be, connect them with resources and just kind of create those one on one plans with folks so that they feel prepared um, to kind of face the, the road ahead. Thank you very much, Carrie. And if you would stay on also for some questions. Um, I also saw that we have Blanca Zarazua, who's the Honorary Consul of Mexico. And it, she has been at the shelter with the, with the General Consul. And I was hoping, uh, Blanca, you could share some uh, information today, anything that, that has been new or updated. Blanca, did uh, did I lose you? Well, I I see her I see her here, but um, her, she is muted. And maybe we can get we can get back to Blanca because she has a lot of terrific information, and uh, a lot of the the shelter residents might look. Oh, there I hear her back. I am sorry. <laughs> so glad to have you. Full disclosure, I'm not 25 years old. Um, <laughs> um, well, we did um, uh, visit the area and talk to a lot of people about what's going on. In fact, uh, yesterday, uh, Wednesday, I connected with a couple of people individually who were very concerned about pets, even though I understand the SPCA has been out there. And so the methods of communication are sometimes uh, non-traditional. And I did uh, contact Commander Jason uh, last night about that situation and he was very responsive and I'm very pleased that we made the connection. You know, it what filters out sometimes are just the individual cases as opposed to a massive press conference. And so sometimes word of mouth and the fact that you help a couple of families directly is more powerful than, you know, 2 million likes on Facebook or whatever. And that's how I operate. I like to do one-on-one -on -one and get as many people directly uh, helped and assistant, uh, assistance fairly quickly after the request. And so we're very, very pleased about that in terms of the Sheriff's Department's uh, responsiveness. Um, I don't know if I could send a small message in Spanish here. I don't know who might be interested. Pero eh, hemos tenido mucha suerte eh, colaborando con uh, la oficina del alguacil. Eh, se han demostrado muy colaborativos con nosotros para la gente. Eh, ya ayudamos directamente a varias personas que necesitaban apoyo. Y estamos aquí a sus órdenes para cualquier situación. Muchas gracias. Thank you. 
Thank you, Blanca, very much for joining us today. And if you could stay on the call for sure. uh, any additional questions, that would be wonderful. I sure. wonder if we could now go to uh, a progress with cleanup and damage assessments. I see we have our Director of Public Works, Parks and Facilities, Randy Ishii, and his assistant, Tom Bonnegat, here. I'm not sure which one of you might be available to share some information. Thank you, Maya. Uh, I will start us off. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Randy Ishii, Director of Public Works, Facilities and Parks. And with me is Tom Bonnegat, Assistant Director of Public Works, Facilities and Parks. And we have just come back in from the field from reviewing the damage assessments and repairs that our crew have been working on very rapidly through these events. So from a high level down and starting off with the progress of Public Works cleanup, uh, our crews have been working feverishly to try to clean the streets and clean up the public right of way in the community of Pajaro, which has been badly, badly affected by the Pajaro River levee flooding. Uh, there was debris in the roadways, and so uh, they've been working with their contractor uh, to clean the roads, starting with the main roads like Salinas Road and San Juan Road into the community, and now going to the side streets. Uh, and our efforts have been made more efficient thanks to the city of Watsonville for allowing us to use one of their fire hydrants to draw water from for our water truck and for our uh, street sweeper. So they have been working on that today and through the course of yesterday and previous days, uh, making good progress, but there's still more work that needs to be done. Uh, there are other things that had to be removed like tires and uh, other things that come with a flood as well as other debris. Uh, making progress there, and I'll be available for questions as well as Tom for later after we talk with the other teams as part of our multi-jurisdictional uh, disaster response and review teams, and so which include Environmental Health Bureau and the Building Division. So I'll, I will defer to them when that time comes. Uh, but those efforts are done in conjunction with one another, so that way uh, repopulation can be considered. And again, this is a topic that I'll reserve for the team headed up with uh, Department of Emergency Management. Uh, for other areas that were damaged during these events, we've been trying to either lift road closures or clean roadways or clear debris so that the roads can be reused. There are some where we can make them passable now, as is our goal, but it involves some change in how the traffic operations will work. Uh, for example, on Chular River Road, we are reopening that road uh, as soon as potentially the end of day today, that is a very high volume corridor because it's one of the few roads with a bridge that'll get across the Salinas River, connecting one part of the valley to the other. And uh, on that road, because it has been badly scoured by the Salinas River's flooding action, we need to put up a temporary traffic signal along the west end of Chula River Road. There's only one lane of traffic that, that is, remains that has not been undermined, which is still good. And hence the traffic signal, again, on a temporary basis, is meant to help queue up that traffic and direct that traffic when it's safe to proceed in a one lane traffic control fashion. Uh, other roads are still being damaged, assessed all throughout the entire county and some immediate repairs are being made to make those roads passable once again. Uh, please continue to look at our road closure and information page. And as always, we encourage our public to look at the other information sources available for road statuses. And finally, when you see a road closure sign, please obey the road closure sign. Do not go beyond the road closure sign. It is there for your own safety and for the other public's safety. So please turn around don't drown. Uh, and with that, I'll be available for questions here that I see coming up in the chat, but we may want to reserve those for the end. And I hand the floor over to you, Tom, if you'd like to add uh, other things of what we're doing. I think that was a good summary. I'll be available for questions. Thank you. 
Thank you both very much. And that's great information. We will get to these questions after we let a few more people uh, share some information. Uh, I'd like to, I see Brian Azevedo from Environmental Health. I'm hoping Brian, you can talk a little bit about some of the health assessments that are going on alongside the damage assessment crews. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Um, the team's preparing uh, to go out and do these damage assessments once the roadways are clear and the teams can access them um, in conjunction with, with public works and building department. Um, we are developing a placarding system to let um, residents and agencies know the status of of structures once we uh, once we're able to enter, um, and the placarding system would be uh, red, yellow, and green. Um, red for for no entry, unsafe structure to to enter. Uh, yellow for um, for restricted, um, where entry can can be done and and cleanup can begin. And then green for uh, for entry and cleanup. Um, like I said, we're uh, we're working diligently with Public Works, HCD, um, Housing Community Development, to uh, to get the team ready to do these damage assessments, um, and we're getting final pieces in place to be able to do that. Thank you, Brian, very much. And again, if you could stay on to answer some questions. I wanted to ask uh, our representative from Water Resources, I, I thought I saw Shauna Murray here, just to perhaps give us a quick update on repair efforts on the Pajaro. There you are, Shauna, hi. Hi, good afternoon, Shauna Murray, Senior Water Resource Engineer. Uh, and first, I'd like to start with that most of the river systems throughout the county have been receding. We are seeing on the Salinas River that peak flow kind of through that Spreckles area right now. It may stay there for a little while. It's moving kind of slowly, but it looks like where uh, the rivers are starting to recede. On the Pajaro Levee, the temporary repair at River Mile 10 is wrapping up and should be complete over these next few days. Um, the Re Water Resource Agency is going to continue to assess damages to all of our facilities and to develop work plans to address, you know, any impacts that we've seen from these recent events. Uh, and I'll stay on for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. And then I wanted one let one more person share some information. I see uh, Beth Brookhauser from the SPCA. I was hoping you might just jump in and share a little bit. Uh, people are very worried about the pets in Pajaro and the animals in Pajaro. And so if you could kind of give us an update on all of your efforts. Yeah, absolutely. So SPCA Monterey County is currently caring for 216 pets evacuated from Pajaro. We have also rescued dozens more from the flooded areas and reunited them with their families in the field. And we are providing free pet food and supplies to all the local emergency shelters, as well as anyone evacuating with their pets. And all of these disaster response services are completely free to our community. Um, we continue to rescue pets in Pajaro every day. We're there right now. We encourage our community to contact us if you need any help. We are here for you. Um, we have information on our website. Um, we've been getting some nice media attention. We should have stories in English and in Spanish tonight. Um, so trying to get that word out. Um, but information on how you can help rescued pets, how you can get help for your pets, and how you can prepare for a disaster is available on spcamc.org. Um, and we just want to take a moment to thank the Monterey County Office of Emergency Services, the Monterey County Sheriff's Office, the National Guard, all the local fire departments, and all the first responders who are working together to help the people and pets who rely on us. Monterey County is um, really understands that pets are part of the family, and um, we are here for them. Thanks very much. Beth, and then Kevin Drabinsky has had his hand up, and I'm hoping that means you have more information and not a legacy hand. No, I, I do have more information, um, and my my hand was getting tired of uh, staying up there, so thank you, Mia. Um, I also have information about a slide at the north end of uh, Highway 1 at post mile 39.5. 
That continues to be a slide across the roadway. Uh, we have long reach excavators in there today. We hope to be, uh, have, be able to do rock scaling tomorrow. And at present, we hope to open the highway at post mile 39.5, either on Sunday or Monday this week. There's a, just a lot going on in this area of uh, this, this section of Highway 1. Can you advise people on what, what's the best method for them to know what, what they sh how to know at any given time, whether it's, you know, where it's safe to drive, what direction is open, how to get the best and quickest information? Again, that partnership with the county uh, for the state highway system, we rely heavily on and urge people to uh, be on quick map. That's um, uh, Caltrans Quick Map. If you do a Google search for Caltrans Quick Map, you'll be one step away from having the roadway information. You do need to check on road conditions, uh, I'm sorry, options, and then road conditions. And then the first five boxes under road conditions. After you click those first five boxes under road conditions, the map will populate with all closures on state highways, any incidents, it'll show the you know, traffic in red if, there, if there's traffic. That is updated in real time. People should have that as a as an easy, you know, it's available at desktop or as an app. Caltrans Quick Map. Click Options, then Road Conditions, and the first five boxes under Road Conditions, and you'll have a map that will have real time information on all our closures uh, throughout Monterey, Santa Cruz, throughout the entire state. Thank you, Kevin. And before we go to questions, I wanted to make sure if there was someone from the sheriff's office on, we had had discussions about having someone on and I know there's a lot going on today and I don't see anyone's name on their screen, but I see a number I don't know. So I, is anyone from the sheriff's office on? Okay, seeing none, then we'll have to we'll try to get them on another time. I know there's a lot going on today, so we're going to go ahead and start with questions. I see if you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand. I see one hand raised. If you want, you can also put your numbers in the chat. So I've got a couple in chat and one hand up. So, oh, Blanca, do you have something else that you want to say before we go to questions? Uh, yes, I just um, received some information. It, it's not overly precise, but uh, there is a commitment to uh, bring satellite services from the consulate to the Pajaro area. It, it's quite an undertaking. Uh, it may seem simple, but it's quite an undertaking. And uh, this will occur once people are allowed to go back to their homes. And I know that may be the distant future. We just have no idea. but. Uh, the concert will be coming out once people are allowed to go back into their homes. Thank you. Thank you, Blanca. So I'm going to take one question in chat and then uh, go to Sarah, whose hand is raised. So Blanca, this question is for you. Um, and, and you may have just answered this. There was talk of mobile services uh, from the consulate possibly being placed in or near Pajaro. Is there a timeline for that or when it would occur? Well, the timeline depends on the triggering event, which would be when uh, people are allowed to go back into their homes. So we don't really have, uh, we have a triggering event. We don't have a timeline. It'll depend on when uh, there's clearance for people to go back to their homes. Thank, Thank you, you, Victor. Thank you, Blanca. And then Sarah, your hand is raised. Go ahead and ask your question. Thank you, Maya. And, and thank you to all of you who are here today. My uh, questions are for Brian from Environmental Health. And you described right now a three colored tier system. What our team is seeing on the Environmental Health website is a four colored tiered system that's got green, yellow, orange, and red. Um, and I'm wondering if those are different systems. I, I'm hoping, because I was gonna rely on what's online to give us a really nice detailed list of what are the features for a building that you're looking for, but now I'm a little bit confused. So I hope you might clarify um, what your system is and, and how those two things line up or don't. And then also if you have a sense yet of the timeline on which you might begin to post those colored placards on homes um, so that even if the evacuation orders haven't lifted, that people might be able to get a sense of what the cleanup status is for their particular structures of concern. Yes, 
Um, we, like I said, we're we're working on on the the placard system, and that'll be for hosting at each individual um, uh, residence or structure. Um, so we're still developing that. We um, we are currently not able to do de damage assessments until the roads are, are cleared and we're working in conjunction with public works and um, HCD. So that way uh, staff can get in and do these assessments um, without, you know, without safely and without injury. Um, the whole point is, is so, so we can get uh, structures cleared. So, so residents are able to safely re re-enter and repopulate. Um, the web web page will be updated with with information up to date. Um, so, but right now it's it's going to be the three three colored um, placard system. Can I also ask, and then I'll lower my hand. I'm not sure from emergency management who's here, but is there an update on the deployment of the mobile unit that was mentioned, I believe, yesterday? The mobile, I'm sorry, which uh, mobile unit for uh, resources? I, th I think the question from our team is that there was going to be, and, and forgive me, I'm not sure which briefing this came from, but a mobile unit from the Department of Emergency Management. Um, I know there are various social services related units out there. And forgive me if I am crossing my wires on this, but is no, there- No, I, th I think it's resources. That's why I just wanted, I wanted to double check. And Chris, maybe Krista or Roxanne, do you know the status of that? Yes, uh, so th that would be, um, we were going to have a van here at the bridge uh, from Casa de Cultura. Uh, we're still working on getting it here, uh, staff member from that very important organization um, that's in Pajaro and not obviously in their offices at this point, uh, is here right now uh, as well. And then, uh, so we will have that here. It's just not here yet. We just ran into a few challenges. Is there an like, ETA on, on when it might be able to arrive? I. Sorry, I've been on the press conference, and so I'm just going to circle back with that press person, uh, with that staff person, to see uh, just what that would be. So it sounds like we could get it up. We could we could get that ETA for you, and right. as soon as we but, get it, we'll give it to you. Right, but we are handing out flyers and talking to people and connecting them uh, with services um, while we're here, and that that van just gives a bigger presence, uh, and it's a very recognizable logo for the community as well. Hopefully that, that hopefully that will work for you, Sarah. Um, there's a question about uh, damage assessments and totals, and I'm not seeing anyone on the call, on on this briefing with our any of our damage assessment teams. Is there anyone from Cal Fire that is on the call that whose whose name I just simply don't recognize? So I'm thinking, the, um, the, Felix, this is your question. I think we're going to have to forward that to the damage assessment teams. I don't think there's anybody here that can answer that question. So I apologize and we'll forward that. Um, Jeremiah from KZU, you've got a question. You've got your hand up and a question. Is it the same? It is. I do have a, I do have a question. It's not the same as that last question, but um, thanks, Maya. I'm, um, I just wanted to check in yesterday under Sheriff Boyd said uh, he didn't think this would be on the order of months uh, before people can return home and actually said at best early next week. Um, given what environmental health is saying, is that at all likely? And can anyone here give us updates on the timeline before folks can start getting back to their homes? Yeah, I don't, we don't have anyone um, from the damage assessment teams. And I think the sheriff is out um, with some dignitaries today so but I can take that question and and try to get a response for you on that sure but just so, just so there's just not um there's not an update on timelines yet at this no. point got no, it no not at all okay thank you sure and that's so um yeah, and so this answers your question that was in the chat and then um here's a I have a question for from Victor Guzman um again structural damage but 
perhaps, um, Randy, there's a question that you might be able to answer uh, for road damage assessments in the Pajaro area. Is there an update on that or is that taking, is that a little further down the line given that, that there is some water still in parts of the area? Thank you, Maya. So for the, for the community at Pajaro, we do have some damage assessment work occurring in conjunction with the debris removal and cleaning work that we're doing on those public roads to make them passable. Uh, there are some repairs we're doing over the weekend as well uh, to that end with regards to what was found during that damage assessment. Uh, that said, the, it strikes me that there is some carryover of the parlance and that we use damage assessment that here on the public infrastructure side as well as for the review of private infrastructure and private uh, properties. So speaking to the public infrastructure side that we've worked with our teams for community Pajaro to have that work done in conjunction. We do have other teams that are reviewing the other public infrastructure ranging from the other county roads and bridges, the county facilities like the buildings and grounds and the county parks. And we're constantly getting more information to update our matrix with of cataloging all of our damages that we're seeing so far, some of which we can repair fairly immediately, others which may take greater effort and uh, substantial expense to perform. Uh, we have the ongoing list and that is continuing to be an ever increasing number. Uh, and the damages range to as far south as the, the South County to uh, down to Lake Nascimento, all the way back up north up the valley and along the coastline uh, up to up to the north to Pajaro. Uh, and that here again, that is a process that is currently still in process. Thank you very much, Randy. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, I have another question in the chat, uh, Edgar Oliveras from Telemundo. Um, it says in regards to Victor's question about not showing the updated map and safety concerns, can you clarify, uh, maybe either you or Victor could clarify that question? Yeah, uh, so my question is in regards of uh, that map, if uh, it has to do, not, not showing the advance of what they have, it's, it has to do with, the, with safety concerns. And also Victor, raise a hand. Victor, go ahead. Maybe, you, is this the same question you have? I, I had a different question. Um, it was more so, so so no one can actually, uh, one of the questions I had too was the percentage completed for damage assessment in the area. I mean, the maps here um, from the county, which is helpful, but I was just curious what the, the completion percentage was on that. But um, yeah, just, I guess, in, I guess just being too specific, is there some safety concerns in regards to putting these maps together for, for y'all? I think that's what Edgar might be trying to touch on. Safety in terms of the staff who are in the field? Well, being too specific, like putting, you know, specific addresses, I guess is maybe what he's referring to. I'd have to chat with him to see what's up. So I'll, I'll huddle with him in a little bit. Okay, so let's, now residents can put their, and we're talking about the interactive map that's on the recovery page. Residents can enter their address and see the status. Gotcha. Now, as far as the percentage of assessment that's completed, is there is there a percentage on that? Not that I've received, but they are they are making great progress. Okay. I had another one, but you can go through the chat first. Then I'll come back to you. Okay. Yeah, no timeline. Um, thank you, Brian, for responding to that. Uh, and then um, can someone, here's a question, and I'm not sure who this might be for. Can someone speak to why people cannot return home to Pajaro? Uh, we know why, but can someone please uh, articulate that as if they were, for instance, as if, if they were speaking to residents, uh, is it power, is it water, is it uh, mold or, or other safety issues? And I think that might need to come from multiple people. And Brian, I, I think you might be able to talk about some of the hazards that are, you know, would be facing you know, anyone going back into that area. Yes. Um, when as we 
we do the damage assessments, we'll be able to, to provide those those clearances. So um, why residents aren't allowed at this time is is still under evac order, and we're uh, we haven't completed the, the damage assessments for for the properties. Um, as they get those clearances, then um, they'll be they'll be able to, to re-enter, clean, and 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 repopulate. But the hazards, uh, you know, could be a range, um, and those will have to be observed uh, when we're on site conducting the damage assessment of the each individual residence and uh, structure. Brian, I was also wondering if you could say a little bit more as far as the homes there, many of them uh, have no water and they have no power too. Those might also be considerations in uh, people returning home, at least to live. Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, along with power as well, you know, we don't want to have, um, you know, it's a safety issue. We want to ensure that, you know, utilities uh, are, are connected. Um, there's no other unsafe um, uh, hazards like down power lines, you know, uh, with, with water, puddled water. Um, there's, there's a variety of, 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 of uh, issues to look at, and we will do that when we conduct and complete our uh, damage assessments along with um, with uh, HCD and uh, public works in these um, in these efforts to uh, to be able to repopulate um, Pajaro. Can I ask a follow-up question about that, Maya, just because this is something that we see after any kind of disaster in any community in this county, is that there's often a concern from people about possible code violations that may have predated the disaster. Is there any kind of grandfathering in of certain conditions from prior? Is there any kind of sort of what can you tell people about whether you're going to be looking at just issues related to this flood and this incident versus other concerns about a structure that may predate that? And if you discover something, will they still be allowed to move back in if it's not connected to this recent flooding? You know, I think that would go with planning and building and our housing and community development. And they are not on this call, but that is certainly something that I would forward to them. They went through some of those same issues following fires as well. So they may be able to provide a, a response on that one. But I did want to loop in uh, Randy uh, issue from um, Public Works uh, Facilities and Parks, um, a little bit more about some of the hazards for going back into the area. Um, Brian touched on some of them, uh, but there may also be utility and sewage issues that you may be able to describe as far as hazardous conditions with people going back into the area. Thank you, Maya. So in addition to the road debris that exists, there's other uh, debris that came from private properties on the roads. Uh, those include things like outhouses, for instance, this Pajaro River water flowed quite fast and it uplifted uh, structures like outhouses onto the roads that had to be moved. There's also 500 gallon polyethylene totes or polyethylene tanks that had become uplifted and put into the roads, which have some liquid inside of them that have to be assessed. And then separate from that, we also have an issue with our uh, Paro County Sanitation District's ability to convey sewage right now. Uh, we have reason to believe that there's compromise to part of the system. Because of that, and through the course of this event, we have been using sewage hauling trucks to pump the sewage and bypass it around from the community and send it to other areas for treatment at this time. Uh, so th those trucks have been running around the clock and sending it over to uh, other treatment facilities, as I mentioned. Uh, at this point, because State Route 1's bridge is now reopened, it reduces our travel time and we're able to take it to the city of Watsonville, which is much closer than is going uh, somewhere else. Uh, 
I'm going to go so, further beyond that. Uh, go ahead, Mia. So I was saying, so besides there, there are physical uh, dangers in terms of debris, but also, you know, just health and safety issues that, that make it dangerous for people to return. Uh, that is correct. Uh, and also to add to that, there's there's the stormwater pump station at the end of Susan Street, and we have had to bring out our electrical contractor because we found that the electrical panel was badly damaged by the, the floodwaters. We also find that the traffic devices that we have have varying degrees of damages. For example, the traffic signal there along Salinas Road through the middle of the community, we found that the traffic controller, aka the, the traffic signal panel that controls the entire traffic signal was damaged so badly by the flood waters that the whole unit has to be replaced. Uh, we've already had that order in and are trying to get a replacement out there as soon as possible. But those are the types of damages that are not really known or seen at first glance until you start going through and looking at the finer details. Thank you. Thank you both. I hope that I hope that at least answers some of the the questions, um, uh, some of the questions that that was asked, and then Victor still has his hand up. So we're going back to you. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it was for Blanca actually. I mean, it sounds like there isn't an exact time frame as to when people will be able to go back, and I believe you said that's around the time when the consulate would set up satellite services. Um, do you are you so you folks are going to be in here for the long haul? It sounds like you're at the fairgrounds itself. Are you are you planning on being here that long? And uh, I mean, I, I don't know if you could speak to that. I mean, I, hey, we don't mind. I mean, obviously, our folks need help over here for sure. But I just wanted to get your uh, perspective on that. And uh, in, in Espanol, too, for our uh, Telemundo viewers, please. Uh, uh, yes. And then I have a question, if I may, Maya, after answering Victor's question. Uh, well, I am here for the longest haul because I'm honorary consul. I don't get switched out. The consul general and the other consuls in San Jose um, usually are rotated out periodically from their positions. And I am just about to complete 20 years as honorary consul of Mexico. And my office is in Salinas. And I'm not going anywhere unless my doctor says I'm going to have cardiac arrest tomorrow. So I think I'm going to be here for a while. And that's why I encourage people to contact me because the office in San Jose can change over time, over the years, but I'm pretty steady here. I'm pretty stable in terms of being the liaison for that office. Entonces, para ustedes que están preocupados que vamos a desaparecer, eh, yo les doy el compromiso como cónsul honoraria de permanecer aquí porque ya voy a cumplir 20 años como cónsul honoraria y los titulares en San José, en el consulado general, eh, sí cambian, ¿verdad? Hay una rotación porque son parte de la Secretaría de Relaciones Exteriores y ellos cambian de lugar y puesto y los ponen en otros um, lugares geográficos, pero yo sigo aquí en Salinas, California, a sus órdenes y voy a estar aquí hasta los últimos días que la última persona pueda reingresar a su casa. Esperemos que sea pronto. So may I ask the question, I think this may have to do with messaging. Uh, I, I had some people that, who are confused about uh, evacuation orders have been lifted. Uh, to me, that means, okay, no new people have to leave. And people confusing that with, if I've been evacuated, I can go back now. And so there's a confusion about orders being lifted versus uh, clearances. And so I think somebody needs to um, make that distinction and then uh, explain exactly what a clearance will look like, what the process may look like, so that people can recognize it whenever it happens and say, okay, you won't be able to go back until this happens. Entonces, yo estoy sugeriendo que haya una distinción entre las órdenes de evacuación que a veces no se reinician y las personas que están en sus casas pueden permanecer allí versus, a diferencia de las personas que siguen evacuadas, no pueden regresar a sus casas porque todavía no eh, reciben una aprobación para reingresar a sus casas. Y creo que estoy pidiendo que se defina bien 
cómo va a ser ese aviso para que la gente que está afuera entienda y reconozca bien cuál es el aviso oficial para que usted pueda reingresar a su vivienda, porque es lo que todos estamos esperando, ¿verdad? Pero por favor no confundan el hecho de que no estén eh, emitiendo nuevas órdenes de evacuación con eh, anular órdenes actuales de evacuación. Si usted está evacuado, evacuado, sigue bajo esa orden de evacuación hasta que le den una aprobación para reingresar a su casa. Y espero que alguien uh, haga esa aclaración rápido para que no haya tanta confusión. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see a couple of other hands went up. Jeremiah, go ahead and ask your question. Hey, thanks, uh, Jeremiah from KAZU. So I was wondering, um, and this might be uh, for public works or environmental health, but I, I believe there's still a no boil order in place because of water quality. And we were just talking about, um, I kind of missed the beginning of Randall's answer to a previous question, but that there's sewage issues. So I'm just wondering if anything has been done, if there's any updates on possible contaminants in the water, or if, there's, if that testing is ongoing and what the latest is. Some of that might be environmental health. Uh, and I think by no boil, you mean no drink? No, the no drinking orders? Well, yeah, I think a no boil means like, don't even boil it before you oh, drink, gotcha. don't drink it at all. Yeah, that's what I was told. Yes, um, actually for Pajaro, um, the, the water, water system out there, um, they actually have uh, bottled water um, for individuals to pick up. Right now it's currently housed at the, at the Pajaro Valley Golf Course, um, but they have uh, bottled water for pickup for, uh, for individuals. And um, there is still in, in planning stages, but that might be relocated at a later time once, once um, operations uh, move closer uh, to the town of Pajaro. But that's all I have for now. So sorry, you don't um, you don't know what contaminants are in the water in the drinking water at this point. Um, I I don't I don't have uh, information on that. Brian, I think if if I'm not mistaken, those water systems are those are separate they, water systems. And they would do their own tests. Yes, they're um, they're state state water systems. And in fact, I'm not sure if if you guys caught this. I, I sent out an update just before we all got together that the Pajaro Sanitation District is asking its residents to conserve water to help speed up the repairs that they have going on. And they're, they've sent messaging to all of their customers and hoping we can amplify it as well. So um, anything you can do on that would be most appreciated. And Jeremiah, did you have another question on sewage that related uh, to our public works? Well, yeah, I guess I wonder if um, the part of environmental health or what public works is doing is testing what was in the floodwaters, because that might actually also be in people's homes now. So if that's sewage or other chemicals, I'm wondering what's going on with that. Yeah, I, public, Randy, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, your office is not doing uh, any testing. We're not the ones who do the testing for that. Uh, to be more specific with my response, Jeremiah, and uh, I probably was not the best about making that first part of it clear. There is a sanitation district that exists to serve the entire community of Pajaro, plus Bay Farms, plus Las Lomas, with sewage service, uh, the gravity sewer pipelines and the pump stations that can convey the sewage for the public system are gathered together and sent to the city of Watsonville wastewater treatment plant for treatment. The sanitation district that manages the uh, cleaning of the sewer lines, the maintenance of the sewer lines, the pump stations maintenance are a duty of the sanitation district, which special district staff here in this department manage. And as we do with any disaster event, we check out the public infrastructure, in this case, the sewage pump station, the sewer lines and so on post disaster event 
for part of our immediate response. And as we go through and we are assessing the system, we find that there are some areas that are being challenged on that public system and we're working to get those repaired. So that's so different than is the, uh, what, I, what I'm hearing from the question is more about what's happening on private properties. And just to follow up what we were talking about, that there was a conservation request that went out, um, that uh, message to customers just went out and the Pajaro Sanitation District is asking their customers to reduce water use by 40% until further notice that to help speed up repairs in that area. And that, that notice just went out. And then I thought I saw one more, um, question, one more hand up, I think we might have gotten them all. Are there any other questions for any of our speakers or is there any last pieces of it? Oh, Victor, you've got your hand up. Hey, man. Uh, yeah, I noticed uh, Felix, uh, his one of his questions about FEMA uh, wasn't answered. It was in regards to the status for getting disaster declaration. Um, oh, and, and oh, I, I'm I sorry. No. I don't have anyone on the call to give me an update yet, but I will get that and gotcha. share it. Yeah, and Felix, he had a question actually for Blanca and I know she's she's still here, so I'd rather hear from her at the moment. So uh, 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 Blanca, the question from Felix um, is, you may have addressed this before, but uh, the role of the, co the role is the consulate or yourself playing, what services is the consulate providing to evacuees? You're on mute. I believe this was covered yesterday. And I think there is some um, financial assistance available. That's my understanding. Uh, but you, several people on this call probably participated yesterday and got better information than what I'd have because it's a dynamic uh, pool of resources that happen. I think probably one of the, um, key needs from people will be documentation. I mean, if it was left behind or it's illegible now because it got wet or whatever, I think the consulate will uh, probably play a big role in getting people's identification cards and everything issued. Entonces, creo que eh, la función del consulado va a ser, en algunos casos, si hay algunos recursos eh, económicos, eh, vamos a ver cuál va a ser el protocolo, el proceso para conseguir esos eh, fondos, pero el consulado, eh, una función principal es para proporcionar documentación de identidad para los mexicanos. Entonces, eso es lo que yo creo que mucha gente va a necesitar ya que perdieron sus documentos allí dentro de la casa o los que tienen ya no son legibles porque están dañados. Entonces, estamos a sus órdenes para ese tipo de uh, apoyo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? There, there was a question about a link to the interactive map, and I was just trying to pull up the the incident page, the, I, there's a, kind of a long link to the interactive map that I put in the chat. But if you go to our uh, storm information page now, that's on our county website, right at the top of that page, there was a link to recovery. And that recovery page has access to this map, as well as a lot of other information that people are going to need as they begin to think about returning home, how to safely return home, what dangers there are, health dangers, as well as other hazards uh, in flood zones. So if there are no Can I, I, I'm sorry, yes, if, if I may, I know you're trying to wrap up. But no, no, it, go this, ahead. this is where I think I find it very confusing, and I, maybe it's just me or the public in general. We're hearing that the review of the safety of the structures in Pajaro has not yet been initiated because environmental health is waiting for the roads to be cleared so they can get in, which I, I understand. But then I'm looking at the link in the map that you just sent, and I'm seeing all of these color-coded structure statuses as if there is already a determination about whether they have minor, major damage, green, orange, yellow, and so it's, what am I looking at? Is this just like a placeholder or is this real data that's showing up right now? 
and if it's not from environmental health, who is putting it here and, and what are we supposed to take it to mean if not the status of the actual building? I, I think there's maybe two different things and I am not clear about what each one is. And I'm sorry to beat this course, but just really no, no, trying this to get is it great. This is, really, this is really great information to share out. It's kind of a two prong uh, answer. So that is real information from damage assessment teams that have been working the last two days uh, in Pajaro. They're inspecting structures and then maybe Brian can talk about how they, how environmental health is linking in with the damage assessment teams. Yes, those, uh, a lot of those that are on there, I know uh, CAL FIRE has gone out and, um, and that info's on there. Our teams have not uh, gone out yet. And so um, it, it is separate. Um, Jeremiah just, just, uh, just put in, a, in the chat. So we have not um, updated or inputted info from our teams yet because we haven't uh, mobilized yet into that area. The, it is a two-part deal. CAL FIRE is going out. I know pg and &E is going out to ensure um, power structure and utilities are, are, are there. And then we will go out with, um, with uh, HCD, uh, Housing and Community Development, um, to do our portion. Um, it's looking like potential mobilizations on the weekend, but um, we're, we're still waiting for, for that go ahead so our teams can go and, uh, and do those damage assessments. So um, that's where they have the orange. We don't utilize the orange. We only utilize um, green, yellow, and red um, as indicators for, uh, for repopulation. So this is just the first, again, this, the, this is initial information that is mm -hmm. on, that, on that map. As more information comes available, more will be, more will be added. Is that correct? Is that correct to describe, Brian? Yes. Sarah, I hope that it answers your question. I think so. I, I will just offer to you that I, I find it very confusing. I think residents are going to find it very confusing. There's a, a map they can look at and see their little tiny house image and it looks green. It doesn't in fact mean that it's cleared for anything. I, I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but I, I do think that it's not terribly intuitive in the current form. Um, so if, you know, if there's some place to make that clearer, I think it's gonna be very helpful to people. Thank you, and we'll certainly pass that along. Any, uh, Victor, your your hand is still up. Let's just do one more and then let ourselves go. Yeah, so there's exterior, there's exterior assessment, then there's interior assessment, and then there are the road assessments. The road assessment part is also not addressed in this uh, map too, which I'm kind of curious if that's going to be something that's going to be added on as well, considering that is the point in which environmental health is apparently going to be coming in and when, you know, uh, the consulate would be coming in too. Um, so I'm, that, that's also, the, I mean, it's, I guess it's more of like an input type thing that I'm kind of bringing up, but just the road assessment part, the progress on that, I guess, is what I'm curious about. What I would be curious about if I were looking at a map like this. Randy, can you chime in on how that assessment might might be addressed in some way as part of this recovery information? Oh, this department will certainly take that under advisement. Uh, it was something that we focused on and the thing that we focused on was clearing the roads as quickly as possible while simultaneously doing assessment hybridized with that. So I, uh, perhaps this is something that we can take away from this and learn and apply going forward. Perhaps there's something that we could do here in the near term, but right now our team's focus is on getting those roads cleared so people can come into the area to do their thorough assessments. Thank you all very much for taking part in the briefing today. Uh, thank you for your questions and thanks everyone who provided information. We hope you have a great rest of the afternoon and stay safe. Bye everyone.